Hola, bienvenidos. Good evening. Buenas noches. My name is Abelardo de la Peña Jr. I'm the Director of Marketing and Communications with La Plaza de Cultura y Artes. Welcome you to En Casa con la Plaza. It's Wednesday, the 27th of October. It was a beautiful day today. And so we're going to have a great session with uh, Rafa. Anyway, before we get started, let me tell you a little bit about what's going on in La Plaza. 501 North Main Street, right across from Olvera Street. Dia de los Muertos is, is kicking in, as you know, the festivities, the celebration, the commemoration. So they're at Olvera Street. They've been doing a novenario the next couple, the last couple of days. They'll be doing it until Dia de los Muertos itself on November the 2nd at La Plaza de Cultura y Artes on Sunday, October 31st. At 12 o'clock, we have the Dia de los Muertos Family Day with music, dancing, danzantes, aztecas, uh, so workshops, live demonstrations, COVID-19 vaccines, and COVID tests, and um, and then followed by an evening with Coco at six to eight, a screening of Disney Pixar's Coco. So that's coming up on October 31st. Also, La Plaza is open. Our museum is open uh, every day except Tuesday. Uh, Monday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday from 12 to 5, and then on weekends from 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. Our La Tienda gift, museum gift store is also open. So bring your money. Holiday season is coming up real soon. Uh, we're opening up, um, we're in preparation of a new exhibition opening on Saturday, November 5th, Patriotism in Conflict Fighting for Country E comunidad. We've been posting about it on social media, on our Instagram story, just showed a little bit of the, the prep work that's involved in mounting exhibitions, who our guests will be able to talk about. All right, so our um, our sponsor for tonight is Uni uh, Union Pacific Foundation. Thank you to Union Pacific Foundation. If you're joining us on, on Zoom, let us know where you're viewing from. Just, uh, ask, do the Q&A, ask questions if you'd like, make comments. Those of you joining us on Facebook, same thing. Let us know where you're viewing from. Use the chat, the comment section to uh, ask questions, uh, make comments. Lo que sea. We're going to have some fun tonight. So with that, let me introduce to you uh, Rafael Cárdenas, from poetry to hip-hop lyricist, theater actor to film, photographer to now podcaster. Rafael Rafa Cárdenas has refined his love for the importance of living in the moment. Through his camera lens, he's captured LA life on the streets and people's homes, documenting the intersection of humanity and geography. He'll be talking about um, his, his work as a chronicler of street life on the eve of the publication of his book of photography, Landscapes and Dwell Land Dwellers, composed of work from his La Plaza exhibit by the same name, which took place three plus years ago. Welcome, Rafael Cardenas. Yeah, well, Lardo, muchas gracias. Thank you for having me here. Of course, it's our okay. pleasure. Finally, this book is coming out. Finally, we get to complete the circle that we started with, <laughs> with this show. Oh, yeah. Well, that, that in fact, was one of the first shows that, uh, that I was involved with there at La Plaza. Uh, it had been in the works uh, before I got there, uh, curated by uh, Aaron, Curtis, and? and Mariah. Yes. Yes. Who have now moved on to to bigger and better things, but their the memory lingers and the 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 work that was done by the three of you remains. So tell us about how that particular exhibition came to be. Um. Well, let's go back. Um. Uh, when Erendina was still working there, she 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 is somebody that I suggested uh, that I had. What's the word? Um submitted a, a proposal, you know, maybe do this show and this and that. And so when she left, it was the last show that she suggested to the board and 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 they accepted. So so we started working, I started working with um, Aaron and Mariah from the get, what well, Mariah wasn't there yet, but she came in immediately after, but um, Aaron and I, and with Janine Vigas also on the, the exhibition designer, um, we all just started talking and, and um, I had never done a show this size, you know, it, it was uh, 60 images, you know, and, and um, all the galleries down there in the, in the, in La Plaza. And we went through, um, we went through my archives and, and kind of selected everything. I had this idea of landscapes and land dwellers and 
not not photography that's landscape photography but just like places that i grew up in and um some of the people that are in the places that i grew up in and um we just went through stuff and we kind of created little category little subcategories of like uh of a uh, you know sometimes how you how you move around the city or sometimes how you um share space with people and things like that yeah we had a few categories uh subcategories in the show and, and it also included um your 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 words uh as i stated in the the the, the onset here you're a hip-hop lyricist poet uh how did that come to be when uh when uh, they were asking me for like my artist statement, I came back to them with what came to my mind and it was these words that I put together that uh, turned out to be a poem that they put on the wall, they liked it. And uh, they ended up putting it up on the wall and, and that became part of the exhibition. It was also the first time that I exhibited a video, a uh, video installation. And I had the, a video um, of that, you can see it on my YouTube channel now. It's a video of, um, it took, it's all, uh, como se llama? Not, yeah, time lapse. It's a time lapse video uh, that took place in Boyle Heights and East LA and all the different locations that I shot at. And um, it's like an eight minute video with the music of a band called Hayoka, uh, jazz band that is um, just an awesome band. But um, yeah, that was the first time that I put, that I made a video installation. And so I, I wanted to start transitioning into video. Um, so, so this was a lot of firsts in this exhibition. This uh, was your first one person show, is that correct? No, my first one person show was at Vincent Price Art Museum. Ah, okay, I yeah. got it wrong. But it was, this is the first time you did a, a time lapse. And in fact, we're gonna show a little snippet of it. Here goes, let me share, I got the right one right there. stop right there you got to check it out it's on youtube i'll also be posting it on our website lapca.org look under past exhibitions and uh and we're, we're devoting a little space there to uh, rafael cardenas and we're going to include this this video so uh how challenging was this well that was the the video is made up of over fifty thousand images and so but i had a contraption where you set up the camera and you let it go and it, it snaps by itself, you know? So it would just shoot and pan, shoot and pan, shoot and pan. And uh, just collected all those images. I, I, after it was all done, I checked how many images I had and it was more than 50,000. Um, but it took me an entire month to shoot the whole thing. Just, you know, going to the location, finding a good time to shoot it and putting it all together. And then um, in finding the music that I, that I felt like grounded it as well. Um, I was trying different things and nothing really felt right until I found this this band and and those tracks in particular that just like just grounded the whole thing and it, it, it connected it I think to the earth in a way that uh, that felt good you know and that's, that's kind of what what you what you do with your photography is you're grounded to the place where you're at both the place and the people uh, where does this come from je ne sais pas je ne sais quoi <laughs> I um i don't know really you know um i like to give some of the credit to um to uh, my theater background um and and uh 
when I was in theater, the concept of like being in the moment and enjoying the exact place and time that you are in, you know, you're taught, like when you come into the scene, you're coming from somewhere, you're there for a reason and you're heading somewhere, but it's all about that moment when you're there, you have to think about all the things that, um, all the things that, that make that moment, including uh, what country you're in, what language you're speaking, social economic um, uh, um, status and, and, uh, and the political climate, you know, so you put all those things into one picture. And uh, I learned that from, um, from uh, what I did in theater. You know, you, you kind of were taught to do that, to read books in that way, to look at plays in that way. Well, wow. well, let's go back, you know, from from kind of in the beginning. Tell us uh, where you're from or, you know, born, raised, went to school and, and your first foray, at least the first thing that I say here is as a hip hop lyricist. <laughs> how, how, how'd you get there? You hear that nowadays. <laughs> um, that wasn't my first thing, but starting, I was born in, in Mexico, in Jalisco, in, a, in, a, in un rancho, pues, como dicen. I was born in a ranch and uh, came to the United States. I was born in 71, came to the US in 74. And, um, you know, we lived in East LA my whole life. Uh, and kind of just, you know, grew up being a young kid in the streets, you know, late 70s, early 80s. I mean, all the 80s were like my, my teenage years and, and um, wasn't really into a lot of, I, I was into art, but in my own way, I never thought of art as something that I could do in the future. Like the art that I was into was hip hop and drawing and, and you know, I was writing lyrics for, for rap music. And <clears throat> because of that, I, I could also write poetry too, you know, in my own way. And so I was writing and drawing and things like that back in the days. I used to take photos too, but I never thought it was something that I would be able to do in the future. So I, I did a lot of different things um, at, for jobs. You know, I, I was, uh, the first thing that I did out of high school was go to a paralegal school and became a paralegal, worked in law offices and things like that. And I worked in business assistance, um, um, helping certain, certain small businesses in the area like um, get their uh, business licenses and, and check all that kind of stuff. And um, one day after doing a lot of jobs like that, I just decided that um, I didn't want to do them anymore. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and in 2010, January of 2010, I started a, a 365 day photo shoot. And what I was doing at that time was I had already started my own business. I was doing graphic design. And so I knew how to make websites and stuff. So I built my own little website and I started putting my photos up on that. And I had Facebook back then. And because of Facebook, I was able to share everything. So every day of 2010, I was taking a picture and posting a picture of that day. And the reason why I did that was to learn my camera, to get better at the camera, um, to um, just to really let it become second nature. I knew that if I dove into it, it, it would you know become, um, just uh, something that just came to me naturally. So um, in doing that, I was able to, you know, turn that into what it is now. But I think I went too far ahead. <laughs> <laughs> no, no problem. So was Rafa.LA, was that the website that you built? No, back then I had a website called Eastsider Writer because I was writing about things. And that's when you had um, Latino, uh, como se llama? Latino LA. Latino LA, yeah. So when you had Latino LA, uh, I actually wrote something for for you guys back then. I submitted something, and uh, you know we didn't know each other, and you're like, oh, cool, and you posted it. I forgot what I wrote about. I think it had something to do with scuba diving. I think so, yeah. My memory serves me correctly, and um, I'll take your word for it. Yeah. <laughs> and and so. Um, yeah, it was called Eastsider Writer because I was writing back then more than photography. And I was writing about events and I was just trying to create a blog, you know, that was um, kind of fun to follow. Writing about music and writing about different artists. And um, when I decided to do the 365 day thing, I decided to put the pictures in that blog. And that's what that turned, it, it immediately turned into a photo blog and like the writing was like set aside. and. Um, I just fell in love with it and, and just haven't stopped since, you know? And, and so uh, it, was it a challenge? Because it wasn't to take, 
you know, a photo a day. It was to take enough photos to be able to present at least one photo a day. Yeah, yeah some days I literally took like over 10,000 pictures. <laughs> I know there was one day that I took more than 10. Was it? No, wait. I don't know. I took a lot of pictures, at, at least a thousand sometimes. I, I think 10,000 is too much. But yeah, I think some days I would go out and shoot a thousand pictures because I would fill my whole card. And uh, some days I would only shoot three, you know. Um, but those were there was some days where I didn't even go outside of the house or something. But but I definitely um, tried to shoot as much as I can that first year. I shot so much. I was experimenting. I was like, I was, um, you know, using YouTube and Google as my teachers. And I was uh, like, I would research like, what are the best settings for a night photography? I would look at the settings and I'd go outside and try to capture something. What are the best settings for capturing like moving cars and capturing the streaks of light? So I Googled, I would Google all that and then I would go out and shoot it. So some of it was random street photography, but some of it was like trying to make myself an assignment, you know, trying to create something that where I would learn something about the, the process. So, so it was like your, your photo school. Yeah. You were able to, in fact, showcase what you were doing at the time. Yeah, definitely. Huh. And, and are those, uh, are those early photos, the 365 day project, is it accessible now? No, that website came down, but I have them all. <laughs> <laughs> That was, well, I took that website down when I switched over to Rafa.la. All right. And, and when did that happen? Um, there's another guy that has a website called um, Eastsider LA. And um, a lot of people were confusing me. They were like, hey, are you Eastsider? You know, I was like, no, that's not me. That's another guy. And he's a journalist. And, you know, he writes legit stories about, you know, the communities around here. And so... I was not doing that type of journalism. So I, I just wanted to change my name, separate myself from that. And it probably happened about, about 2014, if I remember correctly. All right. And, and, you, and you call it Rafa.LA. How long have you been Rafa? Well, <laughs> I was born Rafael. And in elementary school, in, my, um, in fourth grade, my fourth grade teacher was an old white man named Mr. Holmes. And Mr. Holmes was doing attendance on the first day. And when he got to my name, he was like, Rafa, Rafa. He said, uh, what is this? And I said, Rafael. And he said, we're going to call you Ralph. And so he literally changed like my transcripts that day. And my name became Ralph. And so the rest of elementary school, middle school, and high school, I was Ralph. And um, when I got to uh, my first day of East LA College and I was walking into administration, I saw uh, a sign that said, change your name on your transcripts. And so I changed it immediately. And that's when I started using Rafael again. And people just started calling me Rafa. I didn't start calling myself Rafa. People started calling me Rafa. So it stuck. It stuck. All right. Yeah. yeah. I, I, I would know when they'd come to my name because it's, ah, 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 I've been right here. <laughs> A Bella who? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, too many, too many uh, other variations of that. And then with the La Pena, mm, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> it's so simple. It's so phonetic and still, you know. All right. So photography became your, your, your mission, your, your, what, what was your muse? Well, that's, that's the one that I, 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 I always answer with it was whatever was in front of me. Like, I just, I, because I'm a naturally like a daydreamer and, uh, and uh, just, you know, like my, my brain takes me places. I could be sitting anywhere and like start to look at the people or the things and, and kind of, you know, create a reason or, or, or find something that I, that drew me or that I loved. There's something that, you know, inspired me to, to snap it. And so, uh, uh, what inspires me is whatever's in front of me or the people that are in front of me. And it's usually, you know, here in, in Boa Heights and East LA is um, I'm, I've always, that's what I've always written about. That's what I've always, you know, um, wrote about. And, and now it's, you know, it's what I shoot. All right. Well, I'm going to just share screen with, uh, with your website here. And, mm -hmm. uh, and if you could just visit your homepage, 
Just give us a little explanation of, of what we're seeing here. Well, this page in particular is, um, this is the, a small show that I put together myself at, at Chinatown. This was right before the La Plaza show. And um, this was a show that I called uh, The Holocene. And it was a show that was all like, pretty much all the images in this show are, are dark images or like lonely and sad images. Um, and I had never done like something like this. I mean, they're not that dark, they're not. <laughs> But um, they're pretty. They're pretty dark uh, compared to what I usually um, show. And uh, this was the show that I did. Yeah, in a little tiny gallery in um, Chinatown, right before the La Plaza show. What was the inspiration for it? Um, if you go to the top, you can read the little um, artist statement that I had right there. Yeah, I don't have my glasses on. Can okay, you? I'll read it. Hol Holocene. Uh, the, more, the more recent of the two epochs of the qu quaternary period beginning at the end of the last major ice age, about 10,000 years ago, it is characterized by the development of human civilization, also called recent. So that's from Wikipedia. Yeah. And I guess this is what you write. We cycle through life on this planet relatively fast. Every new wave of humans trying to outdo the last. As we create, we also destroy. We do this in large groups. We do this as individuals. All of the choices and progress of humans before us have led to where we are now. Just like the choices we make will determine elements of the future population. The human person in its collective pursuit of the future forgets the self and the now. These are the moments where we see the need for help but have perceived boundaries that stop us. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> It's, 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 it carries a lot, you know, but uh, um, just to think of the Holocene and it's kind of like to think of like what has the Holocene pretty much started when man stepped on earth, like when, when man became is when our epoch started. So it's kind of like this is uh, an example of what man has brought us. And it's all this like, you know, all this destruction yeah. and just a lot, a lot of sad loneliness and stuff. Not, I know that the world is not all that, but this is like what that focus of that show was, you know. And was this something that that sprung from the way you were emoting at the time? Something you were feeling? Probably, yeah. Um, I think the word Holocene was stuck in my head because I read a book called Man on the Holocene, and once that word stuck in my head, um, you know, I just, I just dove into different. Um, different things about that word and then started to like try to find um so a lot of these like this exhibit first i shoot for years and then when i think of the idea then i'll put it together and try to match that so because i do it that way it's different you know i could just look through my archives and find photos from like years ago that still like fit within the parameters of that thought wow and so you've been shooting now 20 years more or less well, right since 2010 so it's okay, so 10 plus seven years. so so how do you keep all this you know you have the, a theme then you want to look back at the work that you've done already that could fit into it so so how do you keep organized <laughs> yeah. yeah i'm like you know 12 of those um i use lightroom are, are you familiar with lightroom that's an Ado adobe product no so Lightroom creates a catalog and what I was doing, especially, I'm not shooting every day now, but when I, when I am shooting every day, I create a catalog for each month. So I have a catalog for like January, 2010. I have a separate catalog for February, 2010. And um, there's the, that program is so good. You could also put like um, uh, tags, like you could write, you know, uh, parties, or you could write uh, whatever, whatever's in the picture, like woman with a dress, you know, so you could search those words later. But um, all I do really is put them by date and by month and separate them that way. And that's how I just find them later, you know. All right. Well, I'm going to showcase another, another uh, uh, exhibit that you had. Uh, this was at Vincent Price, I believe the backyard tableau. Yeah. So let me let me just talk about that one real quick, because sure. 
because of what we just said right now, where what I used to do is like shoot everything and just shoot and compile images and then think of an idea and make a show around the idea. So when I started shooting these backyards, uh, I was trying to do the opposite for myself. I said, I'm gonna, I'm gonna shoot, I'm gonna pick something and I'm gonna shoot only that. <laughs> and so instead of not giving myself perimeters, I gave myself a perimeter and the perimeter was a backyard. Everything had to be shot in somebody's backyard um, or, or you know, their space in their home. Uh, and and uh, this was the first time that I shot in color. Not the first time I shot in color, but it was the first show that was all in color. And it was also, um, uh, I shot it all with a Canon 50 millimeter um, camera. Oh, so, so just lens. one, but, just yeah, one. Just one lens. I would go, I would tell people, I would announce that I'm shooting and I, I'm still doing it if anybody wants me to shoot their backyard party because I kind of want to shoot that forever and just compile um, backyard moments. And uh, so this was actually shot the summer of 2016, all of these images that you see. And I would just tell people, if you're having a party, let me know. I would go to the party, I would shoot for two hours and leave. That's all I would do. Like, And uh, with that, I gathered all these different images from different parties. And this show was um, curated by Pilar uh, Tompkins Rivas when she was at Vincent Price. She's also now at the Lucas, which is interesting. <laughs> She's yeah. over there with Aaron Curtis. And, um, and she, uh, she, she uh, was looking through my things back in those days and she was like, you know, let's do something with these um, color photos here. And so we, uh, we did, that was my first like full color show. And it was only like nine pieces. So right. it was a small, small little show. Well, let's <clears> check it out. And if you could tell us a little bit about what we're seeing here. So we called it um, Backyard Tableau. And so a, a lot of these images, it, it's just, you know, backyard fun and <laughs> <laughs> different things you know like that one was a hit people love that <laughs> that one there and um if you could if you look through like my entire collection you would see like where these match different parties this was somebody that lived in an apartment so it wasn't like a traditional backyard but it's still like you know it was a yard in the back of their office i mean their apartment so would you would you uh so you, your your purpose was to shoot and to capture, like in this case, the, the the frivolity, the you know the colors, of course, the just the, the atmosphere of the party. Yeah. This was on the fourth of July, and uh, the kids were playing with water balloons. Oh, beautiful! Cool party compositions. I love the colors, the the way they're popping. And you do get the sense of, of, of a party, backyard, summertime. Yeah. This right. one's a little more like, you know, East LA backyard party. Now, this one, I was like, okay, I was standing in the backyard. They're inside, but I'm standing at the back door. That's the back door, you know, so. And would you, would you, your purpose was to, to, to capture, would you hang out afterwards or it was just two hours and boom? Um. Most of them are two hours and out, unless it was like uh, like the one with the piñata was my friend's birthday. So I stuck around there for oh, a there while. there you go. All right. Yeah. Enjoy, enjoy yourself afterwards. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. All right. And and, uh, and so then, then came uh, landscapes and land dwellers. Tell us about your, your we talked a little bit about its, its genesis. Now, and during its run, of course, we had some, some programming that wrapped around it, an artist talk that you, that you did. Um, also, Betty Avila came in and had a discussion. You had the band over one time. I remember that. It was incredible. Uh, so, so what was the reception that you felt? And how did this change, if you at all? Or what was your reaction to it? Huh. I hadn't thought of that. <laughs> well, uh, OK, wait. Ask me the question again. Let OK, me... there were a lot of questions in there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> So what was what was the the, uh, the 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 fundamental experience that you had there? Well, 
I, I had never done a show like this size and, and I'm working with Janine and with Aaron and Mariah. And sometimes, you know, once we had all the images put together and, you know, oh man, I wish I could remember what I felt like when I, cause I talked about it one night and, and one of the, the, the night of the band night when we all read poetry too, um, I remember um, talking about how it felt like that I was birthing a child, you know, because we worked on it for months, months and months. And then like, you know, it's finally like comes out and it's ready to go. And, and, you know, you bleed a little, you hurt a little, you, 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 it, it's, it's tough. It, it's really like tough to like uh, make choices and cut things out and that's not going to be in, but this is going to be in. And <clears throat> I don't know, it, it, I was probably so deeply connected to everything that it makes it hard to like move things around. But um, once we selected everything and, and went forward, uh, working with uh, La Plaza was amazing because they did all the work. You know? <laughs> I was used to putting on my own shows, you know, except for the, the, the show at um, VPAM, but I usually produce and put up my own shows and, and uh, you know, find my own spaces where I can show my work. And that's one of the ways that I stayed um, in like in the public eye too. Like I, I just, I love the process of shooting, but it's a, another, another element of the photography thing is showing it, you know, and, and um, uh, sharing it with people. So, when we did this one, I remember um, when they were hanging, I walked in and, you know, you guys had professional hangers and <laughs> there was professional installers doing one thing. And, oh, yeah. and I kind of felt like, well, uh, I'll come back when it's when it's ready then. <laughs> <laughs> Tell you me know, when the party begins. Yeah, because at that point, like I was afraid to touch their their equipment and things like that. So, um, yeah, I mean, I, I had a great time um, with that show. And, and once it was finally installed and I walked in and I, I didn't, I didn't know what that was going to feel like. And, and it felt really good. It okay. felt really good to walk through that hallway. Like the first time that I walked through, I mean, always, but the first time that I walked through it, uh, it was, it felt good to see that, you know, it felt so nice that like all the attention that was given to these images and, and uh, to the entire exhibit, it's, it, it was, it, I don't think it, it's, probably true that i will never have a show like that again you know hey, i mean i don't know. i'll ever have a show where i can select 60 or more images you know that's that was a a, a crazy big show if it ever happens it might happen after i'm dead but uh, while i'm alive man if i ever get to do that again um that would be a lot of fun because i um it's only been a few years since then but i feel like i have so much more work now too and even then like I chose 60 images out of, you know, thousands. So maybe maybe another day I'll get a chance to do a show like that. It would be really, really exciting to come back to La Plaza in 10 years. <laughs> well, well, here, I'm going to share some. Sorry that it's in, in this format, Dropbox. Did no, I, let, let, me, let me show the, the book. Yeah, please do. OK. All right, here, I'm going to let me stop the share here. All right. How do we, I All hit right. share screen. Yeah, you just click on the share screen down at the bottom, the little clicker, and yeah. then you'll get a, the, a little white thing that shows, uh, there you go. All right, you guys can see this? You can see this? Yeah. Okay, so um, these are the images that were in the show. This is the, the book, the PDF format of the book that um, I'm going to be uh, releasing this Friday at um, Espacio 1839 in Ball Heights. <clears throat> and... Um, Oh, that's the wrong button. I can barely see. So these two images right here were the first ones when you walked in. And uh, seeing these two images when they walked in was very like beautiful. This is um, a memorial that was out in Lincoln Heights one day when I was walking around. I'm also gonna print this into a, a, a poster, 12 by 18. I'll be taking some of those two to La Plaza for nice. For sale. So these are all just images that I I, I uh, shot within the last ten to twelve years. This one here was uh, the first day of my three hundred and sixty five day photo shoot. I lived up the street from there, and um, this was the first shot, January first of twenty 
2010. This was the first shot that was posted on my photo blog from back then. And uh, I used to call this uh, the ghost of no Noam Chomsky because on the left side there is a faded poster of Noam Chomsky. <laughs> but uh, I just kept the name Latin Playboy. This place doesn't exist anymore. Um, it's been turned into, a, a, of course, a, a weed store, and now it's a now it's a phone store. I know it's horrible. <laughs> Quite but, a transition. I mean, but it was a bar before, so it's not like it's not like we're missing anything amazing. And I wonder if uh, the, the Los Lobos offshoot the Latin Playboys if they got their name from this bar. They didn't get their name from this bar, but if you go to their website, this photo is their website um, image. They they um they asked me for it. Nice. All right. And that's a great album, by the way. I love that album. <laughs> Latin Playboys. Okay. Uh, you know, I don't want to get into like every image, talk no, no. about one, but, okay, but every but yeah. give us a taste. Like some like what I I love your composition for one. You know, the 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 when you show the single shots uh and the and the spareness of them. Like that very first one that you showed with the with the little crucifix and the the blank wall, yeah. And, you know, the, the, there's so few elements, but it, it just really expresses a lot. You know, that's how I felt when I walked by. <laughs> um, you know, I was attracted to the colors too, and it it means so much. There 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 is a lot of meaning, especially if you live in this neighborhood and and. Uh, you know, you you walk by these um, memorials, and and uh, you know, you, you just get that that emotional you know reminder of how things are in some places. Sure, yeah, no, the the austerity of it, but knowing that something happened there that that yeah. caused you know you you have your your vel veladorio there, and then the crucifix. So yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah. So, so tell us, you're you're showing. Are you uh, uh, at at the espacio? You'll be presenting your book. Will you be doing any like a read uh, of any kind? Uh, but it's also a gallery, so you'll be showcasing yeah. other photographers as well, right? Yeah. So I'm I'm sharing the the wall space with um, eight other photographers, um, friends of mine that uh, I I just um, <clears throat> I wanted to bring into this um, just to um, you know some of them don't hardly show uh so i wanted to make sure that i invited them and, and then of course um star montana is a ridiculous amazing photographer and and um, i'm excited that she agreed to be a part of this show um and i'm happy to have her and it's just you know espacio espacio is kind of like home base you know it's just a it's a store, it's a community uh, center too, where you could do other things there um, if you have radio shows and things like that. But but it, it just feels like, you know, hey, what's up, Nico? Um, can I do a show? Yeah, sure, what day do you wanna do it? You know, it's like, all right, let's put this together. And uh, it, he really like facilitates the process and makes it really easy. And um, he is for the artists, so he's he's there to help artists, especially community artists. And and I'm really grateful to Espacio and and um, Nico and Myra and and what they do um, for um, artists like myself. I, I've I've had I did my last book release right there too, and I've had a couple of other shows there um, with other people. And just um, it's it's just a cool spot. And if you haven't been there, it's Espacio One Eight Three Nine because the address is 1839 First Street. <clears throat> Come right. check. All right. Well, right now you're showing uh, uh, one of the, the photographs from yeah. the landscapes and land, land dwellers. And, and so this was your first opportunity maybe of, of actually going up in a helicopter and shooting. Yeah, I stopped on this because I did want to tell that. Um, uh, thanks to uh, La Plaza, I had some budget to shoot some of this stuff. And and I just said, "Well, let's let's go get on a helicopter." <laughs> and uh, I this was after I was putting the show together. It still didn't feel complete. I wanted to show more of the land, and I felt something was missing. And um, I just booked it, and I went up there by myself on a tiny helicopter. 
And I was really afraid because they removed the door on my side so I could stick the camera out and stuff. So I had no door, a tiny seatbelt. That was it. And, you know, he would turn and I would lean into the air. It was scary. But, um, yeah, I came back with um, tons of images from the sky. And, and um, this is one of them. That's the, I don't know if you can see it on your computers, but that's the East LA um, sign right there. And, uh, yeah, I, I can't, this, this, the, the images from the sky really, like, um, brought it all together for me. I, um, I can't make that bigger. But, yeah. So let me just keep going here. You gotta buy the book. Yeah, this is another. This is a, the Maravilla projects from the sky. To you, Chavez. This, this, this is this is something that you also get for the show. Is the, the combination of images? Is this something that you've yeah. done before, or or that? Uh... Well, this is the first time I did it. Were were these diptychs too? And the diptychs because their size was so. Uh, humongous also tied the show together and like separated um different parts of it and um man these these things were beautiful printed and this uh piece right here it's it's one piece but it's on two pages of the book that's why it's like that but this is also an aerial of city terrace and the 10 freeway right there and those are those parrots that fly around los angeles all the time oh yeah we got them here in the yeah yeah they're they live in Pasadena and Rosemary, but they come over here and terrorize our trees. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, a, a lot of this is just, you know, um, walking through the neighborhood, seeing colors, seeing different things, downtown. A few people in there, this is- uh, Beautiful. Yeah, I remember the day this gentleman came by to- yeah. uh, to La Plaza to check out his his uh, the portrait there. He's a local handyman, um, and he was actually there was a studio that we had on Olympic, and he was cleaning it out for us. And then I I said, "Come on, let me take your picture." And he said, "Oh, bueno pues." And then he he gave me this pose. I did not tell him to pose like that. <laughs> he just gave me this pose, and I thought it was brilliant. So heroic. He's he's just proud of his uh, the work that he does, obviously. Uh, yeah, I, he told me that he went and um, sent me pictures of that day, and I gave him a print of this thing. He's really happy. Very He's nice. really happy with this. All right. Well, let's uh, let's talk about what what happened after this. Uh, you know, particularly the the kind of like a, a project that you that you were working on during this this time period in which we all experienced uh, the 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 pandemic lockdown. Oh, how did you get through it? Or have you gone through it? So. Because I did the 365 day photo shoot in 2010, I decided that in 2020, I was gonna do another 365 day photo shoot. And, you know, I started January 1st collecting my photos and, and unbeknownst that I would end up capturing, you know, the pandemic as it hit us and, and the BLM movement and just so much, um, you know what we were feeling in those days and and uh some some pretty dark photos in there too and and just some uplifting photos and some photos that just showed like you know a desolate downtown and things like that it was it was interesting being out during those days um i ride my bike and and I, there was a lot of times where i would just you know downtown was mine there was no cars out there you know <laughs> a few cars and, and a few um uh military people out there but yeah it was interesting well, this was uh let me see if i got i have this one photo here or at least uh this page this starts december 31st or it ends december 31st 2020 so this is the last yeah. so that's the last picture i took of the whole um the 365 day photo shoot and that was uh from a hike of course up in griffith park and uh that that was just what I, it was nice to end like in kind of like a quote unquote epic moment, epic shot, you know, like, like I'm watching you, Ali, <laughs> you know. All right. Well, you know, you could check out, uh, you know, uh, some of his galleries, which uh, Rafa has on his Rafa.LA website. Uh, now tell us, now, now you're doing a, um, a Vcast, your podcaster. Oh, yeah. So I started this vlog um, 
just for fun, really. I, I have a lot of fun doing that stuff. And the editing process is so much fun. And it, it's, it's just like a video log, right? So I just shoot things throughout the week and then I'll put them together at the end of the week and then post it. Um, yeah, right now I'm just seeing where it goes. I, I don't really have a direction for that. I'm just like trying to enjoy um, having this YouTube channel and, and growing it and trying to um, include new things in it. And um, I had a really busy month. So this month I didn't do a lot of posting, but um, I have one coming up next week, but I'm also working on, on the podcast, which is uh, my new baby. And the podcast is uh, a lot of fun to shoot too. And so far I've had, um, two guests that I've posted and I, today I recorded another one. So my third podcast episode is going up um, this Friday. Those are, I just wanted to, um, I don't, I don't watch a lot of TV anymore. I watch a lot of YouTube. <laughs> so like in watching YouTube and, and, um, and all that, I, I decided that that's the direction I wanted to go and just create something like that. It has nothing to do with photography. It's just, um, it's just an outlet, you know, it's just an outlet for like, fun no it's it's a showcase for for your your creativity for one your curiosity uh you know you you've uh you've interviewed a couple really interesting people sand yeah. sand owner sand wonder sand wonder hustle and grind and then uh ivan gallardo yeah. our culture's consultant and then yeah have... and the the person that i recorded today was mario ibarra jr Oh, the Wilmas. Yeah, Wilmas in the house. Uh, he's, you know, he's a lot of fun. <laughs> if I remember, uh, uh, I forgot. What? There you go, Wilmas. Yeah, Wilmas was in the house today, and um, Mario's a lot of fun. Mario's, um, and and honestly, like so far, every guest that I've had is full of stories. They each have like filled the hour-long podcast with. Um, good stories and good advice and and um, just good uh, little things for um, people to take, you know, take take away from listening. So I'm I'm happy right now with that podcast. It's it's um, I I can only do it once every two weeks right now, but hopefully in the future I'll do it once a week. All right. Well, you've told us stories. Now now give us some advice. Oh damn. <laughs> What did Mario said? He said, show up to blow up, you know? <laughs> okay, there you go. That's a good one. He didn't say that on the podcast, but he <laughs> said that uh, the other day. So show up to blow up, you know, what's that advice? Well, I mean, the, the advice that I always give like young artists or artists in general is just produce. And that's part of why um, I kind of go from one thing to another because, uh, you know, I, I took a lot of pictures to the point where it's like, okay, I can put the camera down now and I don't feel like the anxiety of wanting to shoot. Um, there are times where I just, I in the beginning, I would like, oh, I, I got to run outside with this camera, you know, and I, I don't get that anymore. But now I get it with the podcast, you know. And so to constantly like produce something is is um just what what my life has become right now. It's just like, Every day I'm working towards a new project or helping a project end or, or you know, scheduling the next thing. And, and it's, I don't know how I survive because I don't really worry about business. So don't ask me for business advice. <laughs> okay. Don't ask me for how to make money as an artist. Um, uh, but okay, you can ask me because I do know I just don't follow all the rules. Okay, then I will ask you. Hmm. Well, as, as, an artist, me, as an artist, there's a lot of ways to make money. Um, not just selling your work, but um, also you know grant writing and and um, finding money that can support what you do. Um, you know, look up uh, websites like uh, the California Endowment and um, and CCF. Uh, what are they called? California Community Foundation and and those there's there's a just just Google the word artist grant and you might find something that you fit within that um that you could um that you could get money you know get money to to finish your projects and make your ideas reality. All right. Well, I, I'm uh, typing in 
the East Side Arts Initiative, which is a, a, oh, yeah, a, 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 a plus. I got a grant from the East Side Arts Initiative, so that's one of the things, yeah. All right, good. Yeah. I also make a book and sell it. There you go. And po <laughs> postcards. You've done, I know you've done postcards. And, yeah, uh, postcards. You know, I, I, I make most of my money um, with event photography, of course, pre-pandemic. Yeah. Pre-pandemic, I made my money with event photography, shooting events for um, corporations and, and for nonprofits. And now um, I still do some of that, but um, like since the pandemic started, I sell more artwork now, but um, definitely like selling art was not like my number one thing. It was more, um, it was, I, I, I had the hustle of, um, you know, shooting events that became my thing. All right. Well, I put out there if anybody has questions. Uh, we have some comments here on Facebook from uh, from Holly Lynn, Chispa Hills. Uh, says, "Ah, oh, this is so nice! What an inspiring, inspiring history and progression." Thank you. We have uh, uh, Armando Duron. Hey, Mr. Duron. There you go. Good big to hear from you. Big collector. Yeah. Oh. Did he have some question? He says, "Love this image." I don't know which image is what it was, but he loved it. <laughs> okay. And uh, Chris Morales. It's probably the one that he owns. <laughs> <laughs> Which one doesn't he? Uh, uh, Chris Morales says in in intriguing images. And then Christina Magallanes Jones asks, what kind of camera are you shooting with? Uh, right now, I, I actually still shoot. That's all there. I shoot with um, the Canon 5D Mark II. It's still my, my workhorse. I've had it since like 2012. I started with a Canon 10D, which was only 6.7 megapixels uh, early on. And now um, with this Mark II, um, I mean, I definitely have to upgrade. Um, when I shoot um, big paid gigs, I use, uh, I use uh, rented equipment because my equipment is kind of outdated. But wow. for my own personal stuff, there's nothing like it. Like, you know, it's still, shoot with whatever you feel comfortable with in your hand you know shoot with shoot with something where you understand the controls and and uh because uh that's you want to forget that that camera is there you know you want to work with you well it, this is the way i work i'm not a technical photographer um i i am all about the emotion and shooting from the gut and shooting with um you know your just your your instinct nice all right uh, well you know you just turned uh the big five old you got your uh, your your show coming up, I mean, yeah. your book release party uh, in a couple of days at uh, Espacio eighteen thirty nine. Is that correct? Let me put it up on the on the screen here. Yeah, please do. No, you had a, a an image on. It. You have an Instagram page. You have, uh, of course, your YouTube. Uh, what's what's next? Ooh. What. <laughs> Let me just share this. What's next? So um, if you guys want to write down this. Yeah, take uh, a screenshot, people. <clears throat> yeah, take a screenshot. What's next? Well, you know, next is is this whole um this whole YouTube thing. This is this this is only the beginning. I only have three podcasts on there. And and uh, the podcast I wanted to live on YouTube. Um, it's also on Spotify and Apple Music and Stitcher, but I want it to live on YouTube more than anything. Um, YouTube um, is, it's the platform that I like. And you know, there's that dream that Rafa has of like directing a movie one day. <laughs> so, right. you know, the, the actor in me, um, the actor in me still wants to do that. And, and it's, it's every time I get near it, um, Sometimes it's my own fault. I, I'm, I'm afraid of it. Um, I'm afraid to not be able to complete it. And so I, I've, uh, I haven't really taken like the full plunge, but one of these days, um, I'm pretty sure that I will um, complete a little movie. All right. Well, well, it seems like you're doing, doing, you know, your career is, is in steps. Yeah. And uh, you're keeping, you know, one foot in photography, of course, yeah. uh, but you're stepping forward with your, with your podcasts. Uh, you've already done a, a film uh of yeah. still images so yeah you, you're gonna get there rafa and and when you do let us know so we can enjoy it too 
Okay. We'll do that. It'll be on my Instagram. It'll be, oh, by the way, the Instagram is rafa.la. Uh, the website is rafa.la. And um, yeah. All right. Pretty simple. Oh, the, the YouTube is Rafael Cardenas LA. That's a longer one, but. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, thank you so much for sharing. And thank you so much for being our guest today. Kind of on a short notice. Really appreciate it. And uh, a good opportunity to to just reconnect and let people know that that you put a, that was a, a great show. One of, uh, we've had a, a few shows since I've been at La Plaza, but this was definitely one of my favorites as a, as a fellow photographer, uh, you know, it, it just blew me away and, and your work continues to really impress me and, and, and create those, those, those moments, which I, I feel you felt at the time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm glad that you see that. <laughs> I appreciate okay, well, uh, any final thoughts? Um, no, let's just stick with that. Um, show up to blow up, you know? All right. We'll do that. <laughs> Remember to show up. That's one of the biggest things. Show up. All right, All sir. Right. Okay. Well, thank you so much. All of you out there that, that, that hung around, thank you so much. Uh, if you didn't, if you caught in, if you came in late and want to watch the whole thing, we've recorded it. We'll be posting it on our YouTube page at La Plaza LA. It's also on our website. Uh, LAPCA.org and on our Facebook page at La Plaza LA. Uh, we're going to continue, of course, in Casa con la Plaza. The museum is open, as I mentioned before, but these really uh, were able to dive in a little bit deeper for people that still don't come out of the house that uh, might want to enjoy a little after hour stuff. But coming up on Friday, uh, our, our every other week regular Mr. Dan Guerrero happy hour with uh, Jermaine Franco, she's an award-winning Hollywood film composer, creating music for movies, including um, she she did five of the, co-wrote five of the songs for Coco uh, from 2017, the Disney Pixar film, which will be showing at La Plaza this Sunday, October 31st at six to eight, free screening there at La Plaza de Cultura y Artes, preceded from 12 to four with our Dia de los Muertos Family Day outdoor entertainment, outdoor demonstrations, it's free. Uh, you must be vaccinated, show proof, or else, or uh, a, a recent COVID test. So please, we're keeping it safe at La Plaza for, for us and for you as well. Uh, next week, we got, we're gonna open up our show next Saturday on uh, November the 5th. Uh, but to precede that, next Friday, we have uh, Inside the Chicano Moratorium, 50 years later. It's a replay with Rosalio Munoz, activist on writer, here on En Casa con la Plaza. So please uh, join us once more here on this uh, virtual program from our home to yours. And again, thank you to our, uh, our, our supporters, our uh, sponsor, Union Pacific Foundation, and, and to you, Rafael Cardenas, a.k.a. Rafa, thank you for joining us tonight. Thank you. Good night. All right. Buenas noches a todos. Bye-bye.